um, welcome everyone to this edition of uh, Scale Up Thursdays. Um, Scale Up Thursdays is an uh, a webinar series that we have every every month, and uh, and as the name says, every uh, Thursday. So we talk about various topics uh, that could be of interest to startups. And currently, we are doing a series on the different AI tools in the cognitive services uh, 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 set of services that we have. And uh, today we have uh, Vinod with us, who is going to talk about um, the topic form recognizer and document process automation using machine learning. Uh, quickly, a little bit about the topic. Um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So before before I go on, um, so uh, I also wanted to talk a little bit about uh, our team. So our team is called Microsoft for Startups, and we help startups onboard onto Azure and other Microsoft products, and we give them benefits. I think many of you have been the beneficiaries of this program. And my name is Vinayak Hegde, and I am the CTO in residence um, for uh, for Microsoft for Startups. Uh, so moving on to the topic for today for Scale Up Thursdays, uh, it's form recognizer and document process automation using machine learning. A quick summary of the topic. Uh, so as we see, organizations today are seeing a rapid growth in the volume of unstructured data they process. So automatic business processes to extract relevant information from AI from forms, documents, or images can accelerate time and value cross. And we've seen this across, you know, healthcare, fintech, uh, retail, and many other verticals. Uh, and Azure Form Recognizers applied advanced ML and AI to extract text, tables, layout, and key value pairs from documents. And it also extracts and processes relevant information from your documents with state of the art pre trained models. Or it's even possible to train a model in minutes to extract custom fields. Uh, so, what will you learn in this webinar? In this webinar, you will see a hands on demo of how to quickly extract pertinent information from documents. Uh, use pre-built models to extract key value pairs from common document types like invoices. Uh, you'll also learn to train a custom model to process complex forms. And we'll also talk a little bit about uh, best practices to get the most out of form recognizer. And uh, towards the end, we'll also talk about what are the latest updates to the service and how you can use it uh, to its full potential. Uh, so before uh, before we go on to the topic, a little bit about uh, a speaker. Uh, our speaker today is Vinod Kurpad. Uh, who is a product manager uh, at Azure AI at Microsoft. Uh, Vinod is a principal product manager responsible for form recognizer, a cognitive service in Microsoft Azure. Uh, most recently, Vinod has been driving the process of extracting structured insights from unstructured data for knowledge mining and document process automation scenarios. And Vinod has worked very closely with uh, large enterprises, advising them on the journey to realize value from the AI and the cloud. And with over uh, 20 years of experience in large scale distributed systems, big data and advanced analytics, uh, we know has a passion for applying AI for today's challenges. Um, and that that brings me uh, to the beginning of the seminar and I'll hand it over to Vinod. Uh, but just before we do that, I wanted to also talk about some housekeeping uh, events. So uh, if you have any questions, you can post them in the chat. And what we'll do is, uh, uh, at at a logical point in the webinar, we we can take a little uh, we can take a short break and talk a little bit about the questions you have, and then again towards the end of the webinar, we'll be uh, having another round of questions. So keep your questions coming. I'll be answering them in the chat while uh, we know uh, you know takes us to the demos and the features, and we'll take uh, we we'll, we we'll like to keep it interactive. So uh, keep your questions coming, and we'll we'll take a couple of breaks for questions so that you know we can uh, we can take the most advantage of. Um, of the services that we have. So with that, over to you, Vinod. Uh, looking forward to learning uh, more from you about uh, cognitive services, especially uh, form recognizer. Thank you, Vinayak. Uh, thank you, everyone. And thank you for making the time to, to come uh, hear about what we're working on with form recognizer. Um, good morning, and uh, let's get started. So uh, I'm going to share my screen. Um, and uh, Vinayak, can you just confirm that you can actually see this? Just making sure that we're all on the same page. OK, um, if you can, yes, let me can. know. You can see. Yeah, right, you perfect. can, yeah, uh, we right. can so, see uh, the share. Yeah. All right, so let's get let's get moving then. So um, again, uh, when I was, was kind enough to introduce me, I'm Vinod Karpat. I'm a product manager uh, on the uh, on the Microsoft AI team. I'm responsible for form recognizer. Um, so uh, what I want to do today is uh, really quick walk you through uh, sort of some of the core scenarios we see 
customers dealing with. And this could be customers uh, like yourselves who are a startup trying to uh, hustle or trying uh, you, you made it through the first few rounds and, and now you're 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 trying to scale or it might be a really large enterprise. You know, some of these challenges uh, are pervasive across industries are per pervasive across uh, sort of organizational life cycle and uh, it, it's just a set common set of challenges right so so what we what we typically see is uh, organizations have different challenges as they grow and as they mature and uh, some of the tools that they need to use to solve any of those challenges consistently stays uh, about the same um and so uh, what i wanted to walk you through was maybe three core scenarios that we see a lot of interest in today right uh, and i'm going to start with robotic process automation uh, and, and if you're familiar with robotic process automation, think of it as ways that you want to process a number of different documents coming in, right? Those might be, um, you know, you may be, you may have a procurement scenario where you're trying to essentially take a lot of invoices, run them through a process where you can uh, pay those invoices out. It might be that you work in healthcare and you get a lot of these documents that are that are essentially medical records and you need to process those. Uh, it could be uh, you're in fintech, you, you've got uh, an insurance claim that you need to be able to process. It's all coming in as paper documents. And uh, those are all common scenarios of how you might want to think about document process automation or robotic process automation scenarios. Uh, the other the other common scenarios that, that you look at are knowledge mining, and I'll also show you how you can build a custom application re really easily uh, that uses a custom model to, to maybe uh, extract data or extract insights out of documents that, that are core to your business, but may not necessarily be a common document type that most other organizations and most other uh, entities need to deal with. Uh, what's pervasive across all of these different scenarios is that you still have this challenge with documents in that, that they come in different varieties, different structures, different formats. Even an invoice, for example, where each one of us can look at a document and say that's an invoice. Uh, we still struggle with, with extracting data from, from those uh, using AI simply because each of these invoices have so many different formats and so many different ways the same information can be represented. And that those are all part of the challenges that, that my team is trying to solve in terms of like how we build a product and a service around some of these core capabilities that we have in terms of recognizing this information. It, irrespective of the, the way it's being formatted or the way it's being presented, we're still able to extract all of these different pieces of information from, from these different documents you're processing. Um, so what is Form Recognizer? So if you think about Form Recognizer today, uh, we have a, a core set of APIs that, that are available, right? Uh, and the, the, the easiest way that I like to think about this is a stack, right? Uh, at the bottom of the stack is uh, services like OCR and layout. Right. And what we do with OCR and layout, for example, is we take information that's coming in as a document, run that through OCR, convert it to text, get some positional information on 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 each of the the elements of text within that document and use that to run a model on on that called the layout model. And the layout model produces an output uh, th that is essentially uh, taking uh, that and extracting some structure out of that. Based on that, we can then build some higher level models, which are pre-built models, which are essentially targeted to a specific document type and extract a defined ontology or defined taxonomy of, of, of fields. Um, we also have an API called the General Key Value Pairs API, and the General Key Value Pairs API extracts any key value pairs out of any documents. And you can also train a custom model. And I'll, I'll walk you through a quick demo of what some of these things look like. So, so we, we're, we're not stuck in slide world and we're actually looking at, at some of these things in, real, in, in the real world to see what it looks like. So with that, I'm going to actually pop back into a quick demo here. And what I have in front of you right now is the Form Recognizer Studio. The Form Recognizer Studio is sort of our uh, uh, tool for, for how you both explore the different models that we have, as well as use Form Recognizer in terms of training your models and building out your models. Once you have a model built out, you can use an API to, to, to invoke the model, and that API could be uh, invoked through REST APIs or the SDKs. So let's get started. Let's look at like a quick example of what uh, what Form Recognizer Studio allows you to do, right? So in this case, I clicked on uh, the layout uh, API, and I, I have a sample document here, right? And, and if I just go ahead and analyze on this right now, uh, we're actually analyzing this document uh, and, and the results are, are presented back as JSON, but we've also got a nifty li little visualizer here that, that you can use to visualize the outputs that are coming back. Um, the first thing you'll see is we have a few different layers of, of information. We've got text, we've got tables, and we've got selection marks, right? So I'm gonna turn off, uh, uh, this is essentially text at this point, so, so you can see everything that's highlighted with this little yellow hue in the background is 
text that's extracted out of this document that, that you're now able to use, right? So if you look in here, you'll see all the content that's coming out of this document. Uh, you can also look at tables and selection marks. So, so from tables, we're able to extract the fact that there are two different tables on this document. Um, and the first table has, uh, you know, whatever the five rows in this case with, with I mean, two, uh, five columns with two rows. Uh, and similarly, there's a second table up, down here with uh, a similar set of information that that's that's also available for you to use, right? And all of this information is now extracted and, and available for you to use as part of the JSON output that, that this this model generates. Uh, so that's the layout model, uh, really quick, right? Um, but we also uh, can use uh, that layout information to now build a higher purpose model that that's essentially targeted at a, a, a higher order task, right? Uh, so in this case, I'm using the general document API and the general document API is a pre-trained model. So it's not something that you would need to train. It's already there, it's already pre-trained and it's pre-trained on a number of different documents that that uh, our team sources and, and, and uh, uses as a repository to train this model on. So what this model exacts is key value pairs as well as the layout information that we just looked at. So uh, think of this as uh, we're, we're building on uh, as the next layer, right? So the next layer is essentially taking all the things that you get as part of layout and, and adding on to that key value pairs. And with key value pairs, what you're seeing here is uh, a key is essentially a span of text in the document uh, that we identify as the key and the value is the corresponding value for that particular key. So the, uh, in this case, you're seeing the key is for the quarterly period ended and the value is March 31st, 2020. So here's an example of how we're able to take uh, you know, a document that we've never seen before, run that through uh, the general document API, extract all of the different tables that we're able to find in this document, extract each of the selection marks that, that you're able to see and see whether they're selected or unselected, um, and then also extract some of these key value pairs that will help you understand this document better. So all of this is done using a pre-trained model. There's no training involved. It's essentially just calling in an API or invoking an API to get that response back. Uh, so the next thing we'll look at uh, is uh, a set of pre-built models, right? A and we're continuing to invest in pre-built models because there's a lot of demand for this. And uh, the, the, the first pre-built model, I'll give you a quick tour of. You, you're welcome to go try this out for yourself. You can go create a form recognizer resource in the Azure portal. There's a, a free tier that you can also start at if you, if you wanted to. And uh, using that free tier, you can come into the, the form recognizer studio, configure it to use that resource, and try this out for yourself. So um, uh, the, the, the first thing you'll notice uh, again is I've got invoices here, so I'm going to run this invoice model now. Uh, again, this is a pre-built model, so you don't need to train anything. It's, it's essentially a model that's available for you to use, and, and it's able to extract invoices right, or, or data from invoices. Uh, the distinction between how you want to think about the general document API versus the invoice or, or any of the other pre-builds is the, the, the pre-built models extract a defined taxonomy. So each of these fields are well-defined fields, and we, we're not necessarily looking for spans of text to say, you know, what's the key that we need to use. So for example, in this case, uh, this particular invoice says ship to, um, you might have a different supplier that might have a different invoice uh, format, in which case it wouldn't be called ship to, it may be destination. Uh, and in those cases, both those, uh, well, the values that were that were part of that field will come back to you as shipping address. So, so we normalize across all these different formats and all these different variations, and we provide you with an output that that's that's usable, and you just need to map to the expected taxonomy that the pre-built models generate. Um, so, so that was a quick demo of how you want to use a form recognizer out of the box with no training. Essentially, just spin up a new resource, get started. And you can essentially start making these API calls, analyzing invoices, and and, and being able to use this. So uh, the other thing that I wanted to also show you is the general document output. I, I forgot to show you this as we were talking about this. It, in addition to all of the different key value pairs that that it, it produces, it also gives you a set of entities that that you can uh, that were extracted as part of this document. So in this case, for example, I can go look at these entities list, and you can see within the organizations. These are the different organizations that are that are referenced within this document. So now you can do some 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 clever uh, algorithmic matching if you wanted to between key value pairs and entities. So you could say, oh, I'm looking for this. It should be something around shipping, and it should the uh, the destination should be a, a entity that is of type organization, not a type individual, because we only want to ship this information. We only want to ship these uh, products that we're working on to organizations and not to individuals. So 
that would be an example of how you could use the power of the key value pairs as well as the entities in conjunction uh, to create a more robust solution for what you're trying to build. Uh, so I'm going to actually pause at this point and, and uh, virtually look at Vinayak and say like, hey, Vinayak, are there any questions that we need to, we need to take right away or, or are we good to keep going? Um, there aren't many, there aren't many questions. questions. I think we can, we can, we can, uh, we can keep, going. keep going. Okay, awesome. Uh, please do ask questions because that's the only way I know you're really interested in what I'm talking about. So if you don't have any questions, that, that implies to me I'm probably not hitting the spot. Uh, so, so do 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 ask questions, please, if if you can. Yeah, that would that would help me out as well. Uh, so, with that, uh, the the next thing I wanted to maybe show you is uh, we we looked at how each of these models works in isolation in terms of like you can use the invoice model, you can use uh, the layout or or general document model or any of the other pre builds. Uh, but let's go back to the slides for, for a minute because uh, what we can now do is dive into some of these scenarios that we just talked about, right? So, for example, robotic process automation. So, if you think about how you might want to use uh, form recognizer within robotic process automation, uh, we have a quick demo to, to, to walk you through that. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop back over to my demos. Um, and I'm in the Azure portal now. And the, the thing that I've built here is a logic app. If you're not familiar with logic apps, Logic Apps run orchestration tools for you. So, so um, it's built on the same fabric that Microsoft Flow is built on. Uh, so my Logic App allows you to, to essentially set up tasks and run them in a, um, in a sequential manner uh, triggered by events, right? So in this case, what I'm going to do is I have a Logic App and I'll walk you through what I've got here really quick. Uh, so this is a Logic App that I just put together. It's a, uh, it's a really simple workflow. All I'm doing here is I'm saying, Whenever a new blob is added to a storage account, uh, I create a new SAS URL for that. A SAS URL is nothing more than just a URL that that gives me access to that particular blob. Um, and once I have that SAS URL, I take that URL and use it to invoke the analyze invoice activity within Logic Apps. So our team has built a Logic Apps connector that allows you to invoke any of the form recognizer APIs out of Logic Apps. In this case, we're uh, we're invoking the analyze invoice activity, so we're sending it that URL that we just configured, and the output uh, of that is essentially something that we're generating, which is the JSON output that we looked at in the portal. Uh, the output is something that we're taking, we're, we're massaging that a little bit, composing it into a new sort of format uh, using some some of the outputs that were generated, as well as uh, some of the inputs that that we used to 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 invoke the um, the analyze invoice activity. Uh, and the output is something we're just going to write out to. In this case, we're writing it out to a Cosmos DB database. This could be anything. It could be a SQL database. It could be anything else, right? Cosmos DB, if you want to know, is if you're not familiar with it, is a NoSQL database. It's similar to MongoDB if you're if you're familiar with that genre of databases. Uh, so essentially, it's a it's an easy write for us because we've got a JSON output. We're just going to write that JSON output out into a Cosmos DB database here. Um, so. Uh, invoking this uh, activity is really simple. Uh, all I need to do is um, I'm going to um, essentially uh, paste a drop drop a document into this um, in, into a particular storage account uh, that that we're looking at. So uh, I'm going to do that on the side here. I've got this on my on my second screen, um, and I'm going to put paste that in here. And you, what you'll see is. Uh, there's uh, within uh, within the next couple of seconds, you'll you'll probably see a new task kick off here. Uh, we should give it a, a second or two. Maybe I, I haven't pasted a document. Let me just oh, sorry, I pasted it the wrong. Oh, maybe I did. I hold on a second here. There you go. So it's running. Uh, this should take a, a second or two to run. Uh, as soon as it's done, you'll see that there's going to be a new document that's a, that's in the output or uh, that's going to be written out into the uh, the Cosmos DB database. So the, the scenario here would be that you've got an invoice coming in. Uh, you can take that invoice, process it, extract all the doc, uh, extract all the data that you want out of that invoice. Um, you can do some conditional logic as well through the logic app, right? So you can write some conditional scripts to say if the invoice amount is uh, less than a, a particular threshold, whatever that may be, you know, like say 10,000 rupees, and you say anything under 10,000 rupees, we just want to pay. We don't, we don't even want to look at it uh, manually. We just want to process it automated, uh, and then you can take that and 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 run that output into a <clears throat> into into your account system uh, to essentially pay out that invoice. 
or you might also say if it's over 10,000 rupees, then you send it out to a manual review where, where somebody has to look at it and, and you can do you can automate all those tasks uh, through Logic App as well. So this was a really quick example of how you might want to take uh, the capabilities of form recognizer and use that in a document processing or document automation workflow. So you're now able to take all of these invoices, process them, uh, making sure that you, you're applying the appropriate rules and appropriate logic uh, uh, based on the information that's contained within it. Right. So you can say, uh, you know, for example, you can do validations around line items because each of those line items is now extracted as a table. And so you can take each of those rows and process those individually and, and, and do any sort of validation you want on each of those rows to ensure that it meets your organization's uh, goals, right? Whether that be processing invoices or whether that be the business that you're in, which might be uh, processing these line items to make sure that uh, that you can process each of these bits of information that, that are being passed into you as part of this document effectively. So with that, I'm going to pop back over to uh, my slides. Um, so we just looked at a quick example of how you could use form recognizer in a uh, demo that allows in a, a robotic process automation demo that allows you to process invoices, right? Uh, so those invoices are, are just an example. It could be any document type that you want to process, and it could be any of this, uh, the models that, that the form recognizer has that you want to invoke uh, in, in, in a pattern like this that allows you to process documents at scale. Um, the next thing we'll look at is uh, how do you build intelligent search indexes? Um, and this is something that that I'm really passionate about because I've been this is a, this is something that I've worked on for for a number of years within Microsoft. Um, and uh, this is an area around knowledge mining is really about extracting information from diverse bits of data, right? So so you've got different types of documents. Uh, you know, like think about an R and D organization that has lots of different documents. You don't even know what what's contained within each of these documents, and you want to do some information discovery or or, or, or discover some information. Uh, you might also have a legal startup where you, what you're trying to do is really help customers with e-discovery, right? So e-discovery is the process where uh, you might have a large trove of information that is contained uh, within sort of like the two parties that are in a legal dispute. Uh, and what you're trying to do is trying to find some information within that that, that might help your case. Uh, and that's that's one of the other common scenarios around e-discovery is also sort of a, a huge pattern in terms of like how some of this data is used and, and, and processed. Uh, so let's look at how you could use uh, form recognizer within some of these uh, scenarios where you're really trying to extract information that that you may not necessarily always know what you're trying to process, but you understand that there's valuable information contained within a wide variety of documents that that you have access to. So let's pop back over to our demos, um, and I'll, I'll I'll jump into uh, an Azure Cognitive Search uh, resource here. And if you're not familiar with Azure Cognitive Search, Azure Cognitive Search is a uh, search index as a service uh, uh, where you're where you essentially add your data into a search index. And the process of adding your data into a search index is one of two ways. So you can either push data directly into the search index, or you could pull you could have uh, the index pull data into the search index using what's called an indexer. Uh, and in the process of pulling this data into the search index, the indexer is able to use a set of skills to, to enrich the data as it's being brought into the index. Um, so in this case, uh, in this particular demo, uh, what you're seeing is I have an index defined and I have an indexer defined and I have a set of enrichments defined. And, and what, I'm, what I have on the screen right now is the enrichments that I'm working with. So the enrichments, as you think about those, are things that you can do to this data in flight as it's being brought into the search index. Um, and in this particular instance, what I've done is I've built a skill. Each of these enrichments is called a skill. And I, in this case, I've built a skill, which is called the KVP skill here because it's called it's the key, key value pair skill uh, that uses the general document API that we looked at in the uh, Form Recognizer Studio to enrich data as it's being brought into the search index. So this is a scenario where I have access to a set of documents, which are uh, statements of work or change requests. So I have two different types of documents that I'm trying to enrich as I'm bringing them into the index. Uh, and what you'll see here is, for example, when I run this uh, key value pair skill, I can I can look at this uh, in the iso in isolation where I'm looking at it for a specific document to see what what uh, information is being sent in and what information is being generated out of it. Uh, so in this case, I'm sending in a document that's saying, you know, here's the URL and uh, the output in this case was a set of key value pairs. And you can see now I'm, I'm able to extract these um, 
this structured set of information that allows me to create a much richer search experience. So the structured information that I have here is the date requested, right? So this is telling me what is the date this this uh, this uh, this SOW or change request was requested on. Uh, it is also telling me what the change number is, so that I know now this is a change request and not a PO, uh, not an SOW. It tells me what the title of the request is and so forth. So I have all of these uh, bits of information that were extracted out of this document. Uh, as it was being added into the search index. And so now I can take this information and add it into the search index. That'll help me with with uh, as I search through this, these documents, right? So I've got a, a quick uh, example here where um, I've searched for the word Jenny, for example, um, and you can see that I have two documents. One is a SOW and one is a, a change request, for example. And if I go look at uh, this this SOW, you'll find that uh, there's Jenny Shaw right here in 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 the suppliers because I was able to search for her. Right uh, now, uh, this is a this is a contrived example again because uh, you know you could say that hey, search would have already found it because it's just looking for for this word Jenny. It's not it's not that complex. You know that's what search engines are built for. And you're right, right? Uh, but, but what this is going to be more interesting for is if I can now say. I'm looking for Jenny, but I'm looking for Jenny only in the email contact field of the supplier, right? And so now you're able to say, you're able to scope the search down to a specific uh, entity or a specific string in uh, knowing that that is only going to be found in this one particular field and, and not in any of the other fields of this document because you don't want it to be uh, findable in, in any other space of the document. You just want to know if there's a document where Jenny Shaw or Jenny is part of the um, uh, part of the supplier set of fields that is extract, extracted for the supplier. Um, so here's another example of how you want to use how, how you could use form recognizer to now enrich your documents as they're being brought into your search index uh, to create a more uh, more a richer search experience as well as generate a structured output from unstructured data. So you started with an unstructured document, which is essentially a, a, a document that looks like this, which is a change request, and you've taken that and you've converted that into a, a highly structured output uh, that you can now take and, and you can you can use that to summarize the document, and you can you can also use that to to maybe do things like uh, you know you, you can do some cost analysis where you might say I, I'm going to go look at every one of these uh, statements of work, see how much uh, what what the uh, what the price was that we were willing to pay for each of these things, um, and then convert those into a overall cost to say like you know how are we doing against budget based on all, all the SOWs we have all the invoices we've processed as well as what uh, what are still open invoices that are still left that that need to be paid right and so you can use this uh, this sort of a process to now uh, analyze all of your different documents as well as all of the different uh, sort of workflows that you have within your organization that that you might be interested in um, so that was a quick demo of how you might want to use form recognizer as a skill to enrich your documents as it's being brought into your search engine uh, to, to make the information uh, more searchable as well as generate some structure out of unstructured documents. Uh, so with that, we're going to pause and, and uh, jump back over to our slides. Uh, but I'll also ask Vinayak if there's any other questions that, that we want to pause for or want to see if, if anybody's interested in, in uh, maybe getting off mute and even asking a question. Uh, yes, uh, yes, we have, we have uh, a bunch of questions. Awesome. Uh, let me just. just um, so, I think the first question is by Aditi Goswami. Uh, she asks, uh, could could we have the speaker talk about the history of the field uh, since he has over twenty years of experience? So, maybe uh, you can talk a little bit about the evolution, right? For example, I think maybe talk about the models and you know how uh, how we started initially, maybe with OCR and then. Uh, the layout functions came in, the support for different languages coming. Maybe you talk a little bit about that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, thanks for the question, Aditi. Uh, so uh, like when I mentioned, yes, we we definitely started with OCR first. And and even if you think about, you know, just OCR as a microcosm, right? Uh, the, the model architectures that have, that have uh, sort of underpinned the OCR technology have all evolved over time uh, to the point now that, that models are all these deep learned models where uh, there's really no... Um, so sort of sometimes the models then you, you, you're you're surprised at what the models are, are able to generate and, and able to pick up. Uh, so if you think about how our team or or how uh, you know Microsoft's evolved in in the space, when we started, we were really focused around OCR and, and essentially taking documents, converting that into text, and and, and generating an output from that. Right. Um, 
as as we continue to grow, we're, we continue to have these conversations with customers where they where you know they brought to us problems where they would say like, okay, you know, there's it's great that you can do this, but we really what we want to do is really understand if if this is this set of information is contained within these documents, right? And so now we we go from a process where we're trying to understand if we can if you can convert images into text to really be able to analyze documents and and, and that's that's the journey that that we've been on, right? And that's the journey that we we still see ourselves on right now because. Um, even though we have a product that, that we can do a lot of these things, there are still a number of different scenarios that we, we've just not been able to hit yet, right? So uh, if you look at, if you think about the industry that we're in, we, I really believe that it's in its infancy and it's 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 still continuing to grow, right? So so there's a tremendous amount of room for improvement. There's a tremendous amount of opportunity. Uh, and so we're continuing to work on on making sure that we can do this the, the, the best possible way that we can. Um, any other questions? Yeah, uh, no, that's fascinating, right? Like I, I remember, like first we started off with like you know a printed text, and then uh, then handwritten, then a combination of those, then languages, uh, then layout. Uh, so and then again, like I think many of these documents, even though we had all of these technology, were not searchable. So cognitive search, uh, you know, search helps you with named indices search, and so you can search for very structured text like you know addresses and so forth. Yeah, so it has evolved quite a lot. Um, so in line with that, I think Aditi's next question is what open source tools are integrated behind the scene in this API? Or uh, if if we are doing the uh, heavy lifting uh, tasks in the lower layers, uh, I'm curious how many open source softwares are hidden behind the uh, exposed public API. I just want to know how Microsoft built this by reusing the software and how much of it was built in-house. So basically, yeah, uh, what combination is like open source and how much of it is our own uh, tech? Yeah, I think that's kind of the question. Yeah, um, that's a good question. Actually, uh, I'd say most of what we built is built in house, right? So um, we have a huge um, uh, sort of collaboration with Microsoft Research. Microsoft Research does a lot of the work in terms of uh, defining what the models are that, that we we're going to work with, and uh, we essentially commercialize a lot of those models by by taking those models, operating them at scale, uh, and 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 using that, right? So, uh, you know, a, a lot of what Form Recognizer does, for example, is is exposed as uh, containers. So, so there's containers that you can uh, you can download if you wanted to uh, use Form Recognizer locally. Uh, so that's an example of like how we use open source tech in our teams to to essentially build out these container images and 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 ship them. Uh, so so Docker is obviously a big uh, sort of component of of our architecture. You know we we obviously use a lot of the Docker uh, management tool like Kubernetes, for example, to uh, to 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 run and orchestrate these containers. And so there's uh, there's a number of different things that we're doing. Um, uh, behind the scenes, like I really can't talk to a lot more of the details in terms of like what what the the architecture is and what specific products and tools we use within there. But uh, I will share that a lot of it is essentially built in house based on uh, sort of research that's being done out of Microsoft Research that that we take and, and essentially commercialize as part of our teams. Excellent. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I think uh, I think people have commented that the demo was interesting and crisp and it uh, summarizes a lot. Um, another question which I was expecting uh, is uh, uh, Mohammad Shadul uh, Alam asks, uh, does form recognizer work with documents written in other languages such as Bengali and Hindi? That's a great question, right? Um, so um, uh, for form recognizer today, uh, we have, uh, and actually th this question is, is, is super uh, interesting because it, it, it sort of leads into my the, the next part of what I was going to talk about. Uh, I was going to talk a little bit about industry specific applications. So, so let's let's maybe uh, jump into that really quick. And as we're talking through that, I'll try to answer this question as well, right? Uh, and if you feel that that it isn't getting answered, we we can uh, we can talk about that again as as you go along, right? Um, so so far we've we've talked about uh, you know how you can use all of our pre-trained models as well as uh, some of the the the, the pre-built models to to essentially analyze your documents. Uh, what we haven't talked about is how you use custom models, right? And uh, within Form Recognizer, we have uh, the ability for you to train a custom model to 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 extract doc uh, information from documents. Uh, that is documents that we don't have a pre-trained model for, or the output from the general model just doesn't address the the, the problem that you're trying to solve. Uh, so for scenarios like that. We actually have two different ways that you can train a custom model. So we have uh, documents, uh, a model type that is called a custom form model, and we have a document type that's called a custom document model. 
Uh, the custom form model is really good for highly templated and highly structured documents, right? So if you want to think about this, it's a form, right? And 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 when you when you sort of like think of a prototypical form, you're thinking about it as information laid out in a grid, where where it's always in the same place in the same uh, for for every every one of these documents. Um, and that's that's a great example of a form that you want to extract some information from. And custom form is is great at, at some of these templates or or, or structured extraction models. It allows you to extract key value pairs. You can extract tables. You can extract selection marks, signatures, regions, and I'll show you a quick demo of how you can do this. Um, the other things that that it's also good at is dealing with uh, it's uh, it's all, uh, dealing with different languages, right? And that was the question that you were asking. So today, Form Recognizer supports over 150 different languages, uh, and so um, any of those languages are are available for you to use within uh, within Form Recognizer. Hindi is one that that's uh, that that we just recently are are previewing. Um, so, so Hindi is definitely on our list of languages that are supported. I don't believe Bengali is on our list of languages that are supported yet, but uh, you know, I can I can double check and validate if that's the case. And if so, uh, or or if it's not the case, then I'll, I can also check to see when it's on our, uh, where it is on our roadmap. Um, and so, uh, so form recognizer uh, custom form models uh, span a wide variety of languages that that, that you can use it for. Um, custom document models, on the other hand, are good for unstructured documents as well as structured documents, right? So, so documents that don't have a defined structure. So think of contracts, uh, you know, where there's a loosely defined structure in the sense the information is always represented the same way, uh, but but it could be described differently and it could it could show up differently. Uh, so those are those are examples of where you might want to use a custom document model. Uh, custom document models only work with a small subset of the features because it's a new model architecture. I actually haven't demoed this publicly yet. This is the first time I'm demoing uh, custom document models uh, because it's actually a preview that's launching. Uh, uh, it's going to be available for you to use at uh, uh, the end of this month. So end of January is when um, uh, custom document models are actually going to be available for you to use publicly. Uh, so, so this is my first real demo of, of custom document models. Um, but the, the limitation for custom document models are that it works only on English. So it's an English only model and you can use it only with, with English documents. So let's let's look at what uh, this whole process might look like for, from your perspective as you use uh, these, these tools to, to train yourself a model, right? Um, the, the first thing I'll share with you is it, you, it only takes five documents or five samples to, to generate a model, right? So it's not a, uh, an overly cumbersome training process. It's really simple. You just take five documents, configure them for use within your, your experience. Uh, all you need to do is label each of these five documents with, with the fields that you're interested in, uh, and then that that allow you to then start with training a model. Uh, you can get a model and you get the accuracy right away. If you're looking at a custom form model, you know how accurate that's going to be. If you find the accuracy is not good enough, you just add a little bit more of training data, train your model again, and, and you're good to go, right? Um, again, all of this process is free. You don't have to pay for anything as, as to, to try out and train a model. Uh, you only pay for when you're actually analyzing documents with the model. Uh, but even that, like I said, if you're using the free trader, you can you can do all of that without actually having to pay for any of this. So you can try any of these things out that I just talked about without having to spend even a single dollar. Um, so with that, I'm going to jump into a quick demo to show you how you can train a custom model as, as you go through this process. Um, the first thing I'm going to start with is back in the studio, um, I'm now in a custom form model, right? So I'm trying to train myself a custom form model here. Uh, you can see that I've got a document here that that looks like this. It's a vehicle, sort of commercial fleet vehicle maintenance record, maybe. Um, so it's not something that that I'd expect to find a pre-built model for, but it's a document that I see a lot of because, for example, I I, I deal with a organization that maintains a fleet of vehicles, right? Um, so in this case, I want to extract, I want to process each of these uh, vehicle maintenance records as they come in, right? Uh, so the first thing you'll notice is I can define a set of fields, uh, and the fields will be one of any of these different uh, types of fields, right? I can I can define a regular field, which is just a key value pair. I can say this is a selection mark, it's a signature, or it's a table, right? Uh, and so when I define a table, I, I get to choose whether it's a dynamic table or a fixed table, right? And the difference between the two is, in this case, uh, this would be a dynamic table because you know the, the number of rows is, is not defined. A fixed table might be some things where you know it's always going to be a two by two and it's always going to look like this, right? So, so that might be an example of a fixed table. Um, so with that, uh, let me show you what the labeling experience looks like, right? So I go, I go ahead and define my fields, and once I have my fields defined, um, I come into this experience, and you can see that there's a little yellow hue again behind each of these words as they as they uh, as they're on this on this 
on your screen. And that's because the OCR process is run through this. That allows that that is a signal for me that, that says any of those words are selectable to label, right? So in this case, I want to I want to label this particular piece of text, and I want to use this to to call this my uh, uh, this is my uh, I guess uh, I want to extract this into my vehicle number. So I guess it's. Uh, uh, in this case, vehicle number. That's the field that I want to use, right? Uh, similarly, there's this field. I want to use this, and I want to extract this as my tire size, right? So you'll see that each of these fields are getting sort of annotated in here. I select these two words, and these are my owner. So this this is this is how this is as quick. It takes me five minutes at the most to to label an entire data set. In this case. You can see the tables available for you to use, uh, but in this case, what I want to do is something different, right? I, I don't want to take this table as is out of this uh, layout. I maybe want to use a, um, it, I want to define a specific table, right? Um, so in this case, um, I could, uh, I have a table defined already. You can see that it's, uh, I've set up, set it up with these fields. All I need to do to, to label this table out is go select the fields, you know, uh, click on the uh, click on the specific field that I want to uh, add them into, um, and with that, I've just labeled a entire row of data, right? Uh, so all I need to do is go ahead and do this for each of the different rows, uh, and once I have all of my rows annotated, uh, I now have a labeled data set with five documents, which is all it takes to train a model. Uh, once I have all of these five uh, rows labeled or all these seven rows labeled, I can just go ahead and hit train. And with that, I'm going to uh, train my model. Uh, I'm going to call this um, demo for startups. Um, and I can go ahead and hit train, right? And you, you'll see that it takes no more than a minute to train. Uh, again, the accuracy is low here because the model is a little confused right now because of what I did, because I didn't label all of my documents with all of my fields accurately. And that's also a good thing now because I it's a visual cue to me that tells me like I've not done some I've done something wrong that's causing my 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 accuracy score to be low. And so I can go back and, and fix this if I wanted to. Um, so that's it. That's a really quick example of like how you can use form recognizer to train a custom model or a custom form model uh, to to analyze a document, right? Uh, so once you have this model trained, all I need to do is I can go use that that particular model. For example, uh, I'm gonna go um, find a uh, example of a form that I can use to test it with, um, and here's an example of a form. Um, it's not in the right orientation, but it's essentially the same data. You'll see that it's got handwritten text as well, which is different from what, what we were looking at. It's got different colors. It's got a few different variations to it that, that our model has not seen before, uh, but I'm hoping that our model can do a good job at, at extracting all the fields that, that we needed to. And so you can see here, we're able to take all of these different fields using that model that we just trained, uh, and it's able to extract all the fields that, that we needed from, from, from this particular document, right? So you'll see that it's got the maintenance log and it's got all the, the rows that we wanted uh, that, that we are now able to extract. Um, I'll also show you another quick example of how you can use the same uh, labeling structure of, of the same approach to labeling to, to label a custom document model right and so this is a custom document model the difference being is this is this is intended for documents that are not highly structured uh, but you're still looking to extract relevant bits of information uh, so in this case it's a rental agreement and you can think about a rental agreement might be different from from uh, like say your landlord to to the to the next apartment uh, landlord. Uh, each one uses a different lawyer. Each lawyer writes their rental agreement slightly differently, and as a result, you've got different rental agreements. Uh, but what's common about all of these rental agreements is it, there's two parties involved. There's a there's a dollar amount involved, and there's a few dates involved, right? So really, what you're trying to extract is uh, are those bits of information. Uh, the rest of the legalese you probably don't care about. So in this case, uh, you know, I've, I've, got, I've labeled this, this data set now with uh, a, a number of different documents. Um, and each of these documents has uh, a, a rental agreement in a slightly different flavor, uh, but we've, we've now labeled this to, to generate a, a model. Uh, I'm not gonna hit train here because a custom document model takes a little longer to train. Uh, I've already trained one in the past. Uh, so in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in here um, and come to my uh, legal data set, and uh, I should now find a document that I can use to analyze this document, right? Um, and so as I analyze this document, you'll see that it's a it's another rental agreement, maybe in the same format or slightly different format, but we're now able to extract 
all of the the bits of information that we're really looking for, which is, uh, you know, who who are the who, uh, who is this rental agreement between? What is the rental property, and what is the price of this uh, rental agreement? Right. So those were those were some of the salient features or salient uh, parts of the document that I really wanted to extract. Uh, and now you can see that I'm I'm able to do this across all the different pages of the document. I'm able to to go through the different pages and extract the the bits of information that that I really cared about. So in this case, we're able to see that this was a security deposit and extracting the right amount. Uh, so now I have all of these. Um, I have all of this information, and I'm now able to take all this, use this in the API, uh, and build my build my product around it. Right. So now I'm able to build a product around processing all of these bits of information, extracting the right values, and making sure that I can then process them uh, effectively. Uh, and and that can now be the genesis of of a product that I'm building, which may be something in fintech, where I'm now able to say I'm able to do some analysis based on uh, you know historical rental contracts to give you a better price on uh, what we think you should price your mar your your particular property at because uh, because we're now able to analyze all these rental contracts from the past uh, that have information about uh, you know what what somebody was willing to pay for 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 a property of this size. Um, so that's an example of how you might want to use this. But again, you know, the world is your oyster. You can choose to use it in, in any way you want because you're essentially training a custom model. So this can be a model that works on any data uh, that is, uh, you know, sort of like core to your business, uh, but you're able to extract the right bits of information that you want out of these documents. Uh, so with that, I'm going to pop back over to the slides and really, uh, you know, start to wrap up because um, I walked you through a, a few different examples of how you want to use uh, form recognizers, starting from an RPA solution uh, to a knowledge mining example, and and we finally looked at what it would look like to for you to train a custom model uh, to extract fields that that you want from from document types that you want to extract uh, from. Um, and I, what I have on my screen right now are a few different sort of resources that you might want to look at if you want to learn more about Form Recognizer. You can always reach out back to me or, or there's a Form Recognizer contact us email alias that I can share as well in the chat. Uh, so that's a uh, that's those are two resources how you can obviously reach out to any one of us or when I can and team can, can also connect you to anybody on, on our team. Uh, so with that, I'm going to say thank you for your time. I hope you appreciated it. Uh, and uh, I would love to see what you want to build with Form Recognizer. Cool. Um, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Vinod. Um, I'll, uh, there are a few questions. I think uh, we can uh, take those questions. Uh, um, I think we already answered the question about uh, a different languages. In fact, I posted a link to the different languages support, and I think. Uh, there will be more support for uh, different languages, uh, and a few other languages will be in preview, as uh, Vinod said. Um, yes, I think uh, this is a very interesting question. I think uh, Jose Francisco uh, asks, uh, how do we use form recognizer by API on a platform outside of Azure? Uh, that's a great question, right? So, so you have two options, right? So. Um, you could use Form Recognizer as a uh, web API that you're calling into. So, so you can train your model on Azure. You can you can use your uh, Form Recognizer resource on Azure, and you can invoke it from any platform that you're working on, right? So you could be um, uh, uh, on-prem, wherever you are. You could it's essentially an API call. So you're 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 sending us a document. We analyze the document and we send you a response back. That's one way in which you can use Form Recognizer. Another way you can use Form Recognizer is we offer Form Recognizer as a containerized uh, deployment. So you could take, uh, you, you could request us for a container, where we could, we, which we would uh, give you, and essentially what you would do is then host that container in an environment that you want to run Form Recognizer in. Uh, and once you have uh, that container set up, it all it needs is access to a billing endpoint that, that we provide. And this is the container is essentially going to make calls back to that billing endpoint to say, these are the number of documents or these are the number of pages I've, I've processed. And, and that's the only thing that the only information that's being sent back to us. Uh, everything else that you do is training a model as well as invoking that model is all happening within that container within the environment that you're running in. Cool. So, yeah, I think this is really important because uh, you know you can you can you can be on a different cloud or your customer can be on a different cloud and you can still use Form Recognizer um, either as a, as a container uh, and even on on prem as a container. So uh, the deployment models are flexible enough so that you can you can use them in whatever form you want. Uh, so Aditi uh, Goswami is asking another question: How much is the cost of a new startup 
to use all of the three fields shown in the demo. I am not sure of what the three fields are, but I think I think this is a question more on pricing uh, as such. Yeah, in general, I'd say our pricing is on uh, on the website. Um, there, there's there's two different pricing models, and there's uh, there's pricing that's also sort of um, um, w commitment based pricing. So depending on on how much you if you think you're going to use a lot, you get a, a bigger discount because it's a it's a prepayment. Uh, but I'd say. Uh, our general pricing is it's 50 documents for a thousand pages, uh, fifty dollars for for a thousand pages uh, for for a custom form and uh, custom document models, um, and it's I, I believe it's ten dollars for for a thousand pages for uh, any of the pre -bills. Cool. Um, I think uh, Aditi has another question on the layout. Uh, so she says, what if you choose five rows in a table, but not all of the columns are present in the row, uh, and how many samples would be in need? Uh, so the question was, what if you choose five rows and not all of the columns are present in the row, right? I, that that's completely okay. Uh, you know what we'd ask is that you have a data set label that contains a superset of the information that you expect to see, right? So you might find that there's five documents that come in with only three columns, and then there's f another five documents that come in with eight columns. So you'd want to label the eight columns, and it's, it's going to do well with all the documents that contain the eight columns, as well as documents that contain only five columns, right? Um, if you think about the variations that, that that we looked at within custom form, uh, sometimes it's it's probably better for you to train two separate models and then compose those two models together into a single model. So you train one model with, uh, for example, the variation that shows five, and then another uh, model that with the variation that shows eight, and then you compose them together into a single model. Uh, what happens when you compose a model, two models, two or more models together, is at the time we infer on this document, we uh, we look at those two different models and we determine which of these two models is going to be the better one uh, to extract the information from. Uh, and we invoke that particular model as, as the as the way we analyze that document. Uh, and then we give you an output back that that includes all the fields from that model, as well as a identifier to that model to say out of the five composed models, for example, we chose model one to analyze your, your document, this particular document. Thank you so much, Vino. Thanks for Time to answer and to answer all this question. It's really been very, very helpful. Thank you. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Cool. Um, and uh, Aditi, you can also look at the uh, uh, you know demos that I embedded in the former recognizer link I uh, uh, posted because it has uh, it has um, demos of exactly the question you have. So, like for example, if one column uh, does not have data or one column uh, is actually split over. Uh, encompasses many rows. You can actually handle those kind of things as well. So it doesn't have to be like a spreadsheet uh, where all of the cells are filled and all of the cells, uh, cells have been. You can have complex layouts and actually uh, form recognizer does handle complex layout, right? Uh, you, and, and again, like, you know, if a language is not supported or if a layout is not supported, uh, it's also uh, because of the custom models, as Abhinod said, it's easily possible to extend it also, right? Uh, so the API is very extend, extendable. So I'm just checking if we have any more questions. Um, if if you have any more questions, you can you're free to kind of unmute yourself and you know ask those questions. Uh, meanwhile, there is also a feedback form that is uh, posted. So if you can actually fill in the feedback form, uh, that would be really helpful as well. Uh, so yeah, we're just opening the uh, floor to questions and. Uh, uh, we have enabled your mic, so if you have any questions, you can feel free to unmute and ask any questions. So we'll wait for a minute or so uh, uh, for that. Yeah. Who looks like a shy bunch. No one is un unmuting themselves to ask any questions, uh, but we've had a bunch of questions uh, come in the chat. Uh, so we'll wait for a couple of seconds or or, or uh, you know, we, we can uh, probably uh, wrap it up and uh, stop here. Well, awesome. I'm, I'm going to say thank you everyone for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, I know you're all busy, so so I appreciate uh, the, the time and, and look forward to any further questions if you have any over email or chat. 
Cool. I think that that's all. I think we don't have any further questions. I think uh, many of the questions were answered uh, with your demo and and the questions that came in through the chat. So I think it was a good, fun, interactive session uh, about form recognizer. I hope uh, all of you enjoyed it. And if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to uh, or Shri Jesh or any any of the Microsoft team, and we'll be happy to you know connect you to Vino. And thanks, Vino, uh, for for the for thanks. the demo. I know it's quite quite late your time and. Thanks for staying up and uh, doing this webinar uh, for us. Uh, we will have a recording uh, of this up on YouTube as well. So any of your colleagues or you know any other startups that you feel that you might benefit from this, but were not able to attend this, uh, we will have it on YouTube so you can point people to the YouTube as well, and uh, we'll send it in the newsletter as well. So thank you, thank you so much, Vinod, and that uh, you know we'll 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 wrap up uh, the session. Thank you, everyone. I think there are. Yeah, thanks everyone. I think there are a bunch of comments coming in uh, saying that they really enjoyed the session. Yeah, awesome. thanks, Vinod. You know. Thank you for the feedback. All right. Yeah. Okay, then we'll see you all at the next edition of uh, Scale Up Thursdays. Uh, looking forward to talking to you all uh, on another uh, component of uh, cognitive services soon in February. See you. Have a good day.